All right, our last topic for our regular trig unit, we're going to be looking at uh, triangles again, but what we're going to look at today is the cosine law. So we went through the sine law, and we looked at the ambiguous case and so on, but we got one other scenario that causes a bit more of a problem. So if we look at this example I've got on the title page, and I said find side x, you can see if we try to use the sine law, we'd have x over sine 62, We've got two other sides. We could use the 12 or the 10, whichever. So if we use the 12, we don't know that angle. So that doesn't work. We can't have two unknowns. If we use the 10, we'd have over sine B, which we still don't know that angle. So what happens is when you get into certain situations, there are cases where the sine law just doesn't work. So we'll actually solve this one in a few minutes once we get to it. And the two cases are what we just looked at. So if we have the angle and two sides on either side of it, or if we kind of think of triangles as being side, angle, side, the sine law won't work, right? We have to have one across from each other. So the sine law only works well when you have an angle. It doesn't matter what your triangle is. You're given an angle and you're given one of the sides. So if you know the angle and one of the sides across from it, any other situation, the, the sine law will work. So side angle side doesn't work, and the other scenario that doesn't work also is if you get side side side. So we have all three sides of the triangle, but no angles. Because remember, once again, if we tried to do this one, we'd have sine of the angle we're looking for over 8. Then we'd have sine of some other angle over 5, or sine of some other angle over 3. So in either of those two cases, the sine law doesn't work. So we have to be able to figure out how to do these with some other method. And the sine law, remember, was based on just breaking the triangle into two, two different triangles and using regular sine to solve for them. The cosine law now is actually based on Pythagorean theorem. So if you look at this diagram, we have ABC, and let's do our vertical height H again. So we know that from Pythagorean theorem, we'd have H squared plus x squared has to equal c squared, just using Pythagorean theorem. And we also know that cosine of b would equal x over c. And we can rearrange that and actually solve it for x. So we'd have c times cos b would equal x. So basically what we do is we want to solve this now for what, what the whole b squared would be. So we'd have... You can see the way this triangle is drawn. If we call this length x, the rest of it would be a minus x. So b squared would be h squared plus a minus x squared. So let's kind of look at that. So if h squared is that part of the triangle, a minus x would be that one. Do Pythagorean theorem, that would give you b squared. So we're basically just sort of taking this triangle, breaking into two, and doing Pythagorean theorem twice. So now if we actually substitute for h squared, if we put in, um, actually if we FOIL out a minus x, you can see we get a squared 2ax minus x squared. We simplify that, we get h squared plus x squared plus a squared. But we already know that h squared plus x squared is c squared, so we can actually change that to c squared. And we know that x is c times cos b, so we plug that in, and we end up with a formula that looks similar to Pythagorean theorem, but we get this extra little minus part added on. So what ends up happening, you're not going to need to know this process, but what ends up happening is we end up getting the Pythagorean theorem type formula for cosine law. So if we we're looking for side C, it ends up working out to A squared plus B squared, which is regular Pythagorean theorem, but because it's not a 90 degree angle triangle, we actually have to subtract 2 times AB times cos C. So when we're dealing with cosine law, we actually get a couple different formulas. So when we're looking for a side, depending on which side we're looking for, we would get one of these three formulas. So which one would we use? Well, it depends on whatever side we're looking for. But what I'm going to advise is we just use stick with one. If we just stick with the C squared version, because then that looks like regular Pythagorean. And all you have to do is use this formula and relabel your triangle so that we're always looking for side C. The A and B doesn't matter what order you put them in, you just want to look for side C. So let's go back to our very first question here. So if we look at this one, we could actually use our cosine law formula. So let's try it. So if I clear everything off here, so our cosine law formula was C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. 
So, like I said, just make sure you label everything as side C that we're looking for. So let's call XC, so that would be angle C. If that one was B, that one would be B, this one would be A, and this one's A. So now we can just plug our numbers into our formula. So we'd have C squared would equal A squared, which is 12 squared. B would be 10 squared. We'd have minus 2 times 12 times 10 times cosine of 62. And we would just type that in on our calculator, just like we do with Pythagorean Theorem, square root our answer, and we're finished. Okay, so let's go to a different example. Oh, no, so that's it. So that's the same one we just did. So this would be side C. This is B. This is A. So I'll just rewrite our formula. So we had A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. So 12 squared plus 10 squared. And it doesn't matter what order you put A and B because you're just adding them anyway. So it makes no difference on those two. But it does matter that you subtract the right one. You might always want to make sure your angle is, is at the end. So minus 2 times 12 times 10 times cos 62. So on your calculator, when you type all this in, go 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 12 times 10 times cos 62. And that gives you 131. But remember, that's c squared. So we need to square root that answer. So C works out to about 11.5. And compare that answer to what you had in the question. Right? Our other two sides were 10 and 12, so it does make sense that C would be 11.5. So if we're looking for an angle, let's kind of go back here to our other page again. So you can see, remember, we had two different scenarios that didn't work. One was you're looking for side, angle, side. The other one was side, side, side. So if you get a side, side, side question, we're still using the same formula, but what we're going to do is we're going to resolve it for the angle. So if we take this c squared and we rearrange this formula, if we bring, let's bring the, the 2ab over to the other side, so we'd have 2ab cos c equals b squared plus a squared, and then let's bring the c squared over, so that'd be minus c squared and we want to solve it for the angle, so we just need to divide by 2AB on both sides. So that ends up being our formula that we work with with cosine law when we're looking for the angle. So it's the same formula, we're just solving it for different parts, either looking for angle C or looking for side C. And once again, if you get a question like this, relabel it so you actually are looking for angle C. So we'd say the one we're looking for is C, the little one here is C, A and B can be in any order. That part doesn't matter again. So now our rearranged formula is cos C equals A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. So if we plug all this in, we'd have 5 squared plus 10, oops, 5 squared plus 3 squared. I'll fix that. Minus 8 squared divided by 2 times 5 times 3. So it doesn't matter what order you put the A and B, just make sure C is last. If you get that wrong, you'll get the question wrong. So now if we type all this in, so we have 5 squared plus 3 squared minus 8 squared. That gives us negative 30 on top, which seems kind of weird. So we get negative 30, and we divide by 2 times 5 times 3 would be... 30, so we actually get cos C of negative 1, which is kind of weird, but let's try it. So if we go negative 1, shift cos, we get 180 degrees which doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, let's just hold on one second. I want to make sure I did this right. Okay, so it is actually right, but you, this actually ends up being a mistake for the question. If you look at our numbers, 5, 3, and that side is 8. It's impossible to draw this triangle. If I made this side to be length 8, 
I have one, the other two sides is 5 and 3, it would be a straight line, right? Because 5 plus 3 is 8. So there's a typo with this question. So let's actually just change it quickly. Let's make side be 6, then it would actually work. So we put 6 in both of these, so we'd actually have 5 squared plus 6 squared minus 8 squared. So that gives us negative 3 on the top over 2 times 5 times 6. Which is 60. So now we have negative or cos c equals negative 3 over 60. So if we do that, 3 divided by 60, second cos, that gives us an answer of 93 degrees, which is is accurate. So so it does work. You just got to be careful. This is just a weird case. I picked an example that it didn't work out, but just plug in your numbers, follow your formula, and it should work out. So let's do one more example, and this one is, let's solve the triangle. So we want side X, we want angle A, and, uh, and angle B. So now that we've sort of done every formula we ever need, we can basically pick whatever method we want. So I always typically look for sine law. So if you look at sine law, we need an angle and a side across from it. So we got 62 and X, that doesn't work. We got 10 and B, that doesn't work. We got A and 12, that doesn't work. So none of the opposite sides are given to us. So sine law isn't going to work. So if we look at this, we see we've got a side angle side scenario. So that would be cosine law. So once again, let's call this C. Let's call the side we're looking for C. A and B then match is fine. So our cosine law formula, I'll rewrite it here. It would be C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. So if we plug all those numbers in, we'd have 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 12 times 10 times cos 62. So plug all that in your calculator. 12 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 12 times 10 times cos 62. I did something wrong. Let's try this again. 12 squared plus 10 squared minus, let's do brackets, 2 times 12 times 10 times 62 cos. That gives me 131. And if we square root that answer, we get 11.5. So our C is 11.5, so now all we got to do is figure out our two angles. So now that we know that that side, we can actually use sine law. We don't need to use cosine law again. We could if we want, but we don't need to. We have all three sides. We can either use the cosine law, or most people find the sine law a little bit easier. So let's do that. So let's find A. So sine A over 12 will equal sine 62 over 11.5. So we can cross multiply those, 62 sine times 12 divided by 11.5, shift sine, that gives us 67 degrees for A. And to get B, the easiest way to get B would just go 180 rule. So 180 minus 62 minus 67 gives us an answer of 51. So we've solved that triangle. So quite often with a lot of these, you're going to get, you're going to have to use the cosine law once. Once you get one of those calculations done, usually the sine law and regular rules after that would be sufficient. And that's all.